A data scientist is someone who creates programming code and incorporates statistical knowledge in order to create something meaningful, in order to have some type of impact, a meaningful insight. In this video, I'm going to show you the knowledge required in order to become a data scientist. And I want to emphasize that you don't actually have to know all of the knowledge in the books that you see here. Here we have tons of books on tons of topics, and it's really more than what you need. In any case, if you start working as a data scientist, you're going to find that the more you know, the better. And so I thought I should give you recommendations for beginner books, as well as some much more advanced textbooks. Programming is an essential part of data science, and two very popular programming languages are R and Python. Python is currently probably the most popular programming language in the world, so it makes it a good choice if you're trying to learn data science. Python is also easier to learn than a language such as R. This book here called The Art of R Programming is excellent if you're trying to learn the R programming language. So which should you start with? Should you start with Python or should you start with R? My advice is start with both and then just see which one you like better. You want to code in something that you enjoy because if you enjoy what you're doing, you will do better work. Before I forget, I will leave links in the description to all of these books in case you want to check them out. So once you've picked a language and you're familiar with the basics, then the fun really begins. You can start incorporating some mathematics. So there's three types of math we're going to look at in this video. We're going to look at some calculus and I'm going to recommend some beginner books and we'll talk about the differences between each of these books. We're going to look at statistics, and we're going to look at it from a beginner's perspective and also from a more advanced perspective. So if you already know some stats, you'll probably see some stuff in this video that you've never seen before. And we're also gonna look at some linear algebra choices. Some of these are for beginners and some are a little bit more advanced. As a collector of math books, I had a really hard choice picking books for this video. So I picked four books which are all really good and perfect for beginners. Let's take a brief look at each one. This is The Legendary Calculus by James Stewart. This is a book that you would use if you took a course on calculus in college. For example, if you were to take Calculus 1, 2, or 3, this book covers all of it. It covers both single and multivariable calculus, and it's probably the most popular book used in the world today, or at least in the United States, to teach calculus. Another excellent choice is Calculus by Larson and Edwards. This one is a little bit easier than the Stewart book, but it has a different flavor to it. You can find these books relatively inexpensively online, and it's worth having at least one of these in my opinion. And lastly, for the big calculus books that I've been showing you, we have this one here. This is Calculus by Briggs. Very similar to the other books, but again, just a slightly different flavor. You get different exercises and different explanations. I think you should get one of these. Which one? I think it's up to you. I don't think it'll matter too much between these three, but I would say, Pick one of these if you're trying to become a data scientist. It's always important to have one of the big calculus books, and these are examples of big calculus books. Depending on what you're doing as a data scientist, you might need to know some vector calculus, and this is a book that is entirely on vector calculus. It's Vector Calculus by Coley, and it's a great choice, and I think it really provides more coverage on this specific topic than the other books do. I definitely recommend this book to anyone trying to learn multivariable calculus. Really cool book. Another area of math that is sometimes used in data science is linear algebra. So here we have tons of books on linear algebra. Some of these are better than others, and most of these are good for beginners. Let's go ahead and talk about each one briefly. This one is Linear Algebra by Howard Anton. This one is perfect for beginners. It's one of my favorite linear algebra books. It's been in print for a very long time. It has clean explanations, good examples, and good exercises. I definitely recommend this book to someone who knows nothing about linear algebra. Perfect for someone starting from zero. Another super gentle introduction to linear algebra is Elementary Linear Algebra by Larson and Edwards. Yes, this is the same Larson and Edwards who wrote the calculus book. And so this book is intended for beginners. An awesome choice if you're looking for getting started with linear algebra and you really don't have any knowledge of the subject. Yet even more choices. This is the famous Linear Algebra and its Applications by Gilbert Strang. This one is pretty good too. Gilbert Strang had, and probably still does have, lectures on YouTube. So you can watch his Linear Algebra lectures that follow the textbook. Then we have Linear Algebra by Carol Wilde, also a very beginner-friendly book. Maybe it's one that you haven't heard of. And another one that's really popular, 
that you might have not heard of is Elementary Linear Algebra by Grossman. All of these books are great for beginners. This one is special. So I think if you do buy a beginner book, you should also get this one. This is the Shams outline on linear algebra. So if you're not familiar with the Shams series of textbooks, Shams basically give you definitions, theorems, examples, and exercises with solutions. And they're very concise and they're very to the point. More importantly, this book makes an excellent reference. So if you're working on a project and you don't know something, you can look it up and it's probably going to be in this book. I myself have used this book as a reference many times when looking for specific things that maybe I didn't learn in other linear algebra books. If you're looking for something, good chance it's going to be in this book here. I wanted to include this one because I really like this book. Look how thick it is. It just has so much content and I love the layout of this book. Just gotta give it a whiff. Oh, what an amazing book. So this book is also a beginner book, but it also has more advanced content, which make it excellent for beginners and people who want to expand their knowledge. And I really like the layout. It's called Linear Algebra Theory and Applications, and it's by Cheney and Kincaid. And this is a book that's not really supposed to be here, but I purposely included it because I think it's such a great reference. It's called Linear Algebra, and it's by Friedberg, Enzel, and Spence. And the reason I'm saying that it shouldn't have been in this video is because it's probably more than you need for data science. It has a lot of advanced topics and it has a lot of proofs, but it's still worth knowing. And I think the more you know, the better, right? More math knowledge cannot be harmful. Perhaps the most important thing you need to know other than programming in order to be a data scientist is a knowledge of statistics. So here we have stats books that go from beginner to advanced. So what is statistics? Basically, statistics is concerned with collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpreting, and presenting data. And the more statistics you know, the better a data scientist you can become. This is an older book on statistics, and I'm not sure if it's still in print. Again, I'll try to leave links to all of these in the description after I post this video, but this one is really cool. It's called Understanding Statistics by Mendenhall and Ott. And I just really like how the book explains the concepts. It's really well laid out. It's a small book and it smells, oh, it smells so good. It's a very basic book in the sense that it starts from the beginning and you can learn a lot of statistics with just this one book. Another excellent choice is Introduction to Probability and Statistics for Engineers and Scientists by Sheldon M. Ross. This is an excellent book that has great examples and great exercises. Perfect again for anyone who wants to learn statistics. This is a really big, thick book. Look how big this is. You can almost see it bend when I hold it up to the camera. And it's called Statistics by McClave and Dietrich. Also great for beginners. And if you have no background at all in statistics, this is a book you could use to learn stats. And the last book, which I think is good for beginners is Elementary Statistics by Weiss. Again, a great choice if you're trying to learn statistics. This is a very modern book. It's got great exercises and very nice clean explanations. These last three books are kind of like intermediate level. Let's talk about each briefly. This is the Shams outline on probability and statistics. And this is good as a reference in my opinion. So if you're looking for something and you can't find it in one of your textbooks, good chance it's going to be in here. This is an older edition. There is definitely a newer one out. And again, I'll leave links in the description in case you want to check it out. But worth having simply if it's only a reference because it has content that you might not find in your other books. These two are a little more advanced. And honestly, if you have to buy any stats book, get this one. This is Mathematical Statistics with Applications. This book has a lot of mathematical statistics, more than the beginner books and it's typically used in colleges and universities today to teach courses with titles like statistical theory. Normally the prereq for taking a course in college using a book like this is having the full calculus sequence, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, because it does use some calculus in the textbook. But an excellent book and an excellent reference. If you gotta get one stats book, get this one. This one is very similar to the one I just showed you. I just wanted to give you another option for a mathematical statistics book in this video because I think it's important to have at least one mathematical statistics book that discusses the topic in general. These books, by the way, are typically used in colleges and universities to teach courses with names such as statistical theory. If you were to go to college and you were to take a course using this book, you would have to know Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3 even before they would let you take the course. One of the great things about self-study is you can just go online and you can buy the book and you can learn it on your own. And that makes it even better in my opinion. So we've gone over the beginner books on stats. 
the intermediate level books on stats. Now here we have some more specialized books and all of these books are pretty good. Let's just briefly go through each one so you can see what they actually discuss. Here we have a classic book called The Statistical Analysis of Experimental Data by John Mandel. And this is a Dover book, which means that you can buy it very inexpensively and it's also well made. This book is perfect for laying in bed and reading and learning more about statistics. So great purchase if you can afford it. I definitely recommend it. It is considered a classic. Design and Analysis of Experiments by Roger G. Peterson. This is a really interesting book. The intent of this book is to present a variety of experimental designs to look at the advantages, disadvantages, and uses of each type of design to outline the procedure for constructing the designs and to consider the analysis and interpretation of data from each type. So a very nice book if you are trying to learn more stats and trying to learn more data science. This has tons of topics that you don't find in other books. It's called Applied Regression Analysis and Other Multivariable Methods. Let me just briefly show you some of the topics that you can find in this textbook. Here you can see some of the topics and these topics don't really show up in some of the other books that I showed you. That's what makes this book valuable if you are trying to learn statistics. Let's take a look at some of these more advanced titles. We have Methods of Multivariate Analysis by Alvin Rencher. Very nice book. Here we have another nice book. This is Non-Parametric Statistical Methods. So very, very specific. Applied Linear Statistical Models. Introduction to Linear Regression Analysis. Probability and Statistical Inference. Statistical Methods. This is a really nice book and Applied Multivariate Statistical Analysis, all excellent textbooks. Again, my advice would be to pick up a book on both Python and R and try to learn both. Then whichever one you like better, stick with that. Get a book on Intro to Stats. I recommended a few in this video. Get one of the big calculus books, get an Intro to Linear Algebra book, and then get a book on Mathematical Statistics. Again, if I have to recommend one, it's going to be this one here by Mendelhall, Wackerly and Schaefer. I think it's really important to try to learn on your own. I feel that people who learn things like programming or mathematics, or in this case, data science on their own, tend to do better because if you have the motivation to learn on your own, that means you love it and people tend to do better at things they enjoy. If you like programming, then you're going to be a better programmer. If you like mathematics, you're going to be better at mathematics. I hope this video has been helpful and it's given you some ideas on how to start learning mathematics and statistics and programming, everything you need for data science. Until next time, good luck and take care.